Hey fight fans, welcome back again to another episode with the African Fighters. And on today's episode, we're going to be giving you a roundup of everything happening in the world of combat sports. Stay with us. Come on, Africans! Ah, all right, I remain Toby with the African Fighters, and I'm about to catch you up with all that's been going on in the world of combat sports. First off, it is official. Easy will be taking on Sean Streetland to headline UFC 293 in Australia. After Dricos Duplessis won the title eliminator against Robert Whittaker, we all thought we were going to see Dricos take on Israel Adesanya for the middleweight title in Australia. However, this did not happen as Dricos Duplessis did pick up an injury in the fight against Robert Whittaker and is unable to compete as this fight comes too soon for him. The UFC went into a scramble to try and find an opponent for Easy. A lot of names were thrown in the hat. Sean Strickland will get his opportunity against Easy to become the middleweight champion of the UFC. Now that it's official, the trash talk can officially begin. I mean, these two guys have been going at it for quite a while right now. And now that they are set to fight each other, it's only going to intensify the trash talk and the build up to the fight. Recently, a video came back onto the timeline where Easy was mocking Sean Strickland, his stance, his movement against Alex Pereira, and a lot of fans on Twitter think that something similar is going to happen against when he takes on Sean Strickland. If you are comments in the comment section, let us know who you think is going to win that. Do you think Strickland might have a shot against Easy? You know, we'd love to know your opinions. If you want to hear more about the breakdown of that fight, tune in on Sunday night. The African Fighters podcast will be live and you can hear what the guys have to say. All right, Anthony AJ Joshua has a new opponent. As we all know, AJ was set to fight Dylan White as he continues to build himself back up into challenging for the titles again. Dylan White, however, had a couple of complications with his testing leading up to this fight, making it unable for him to compete against AJ. Since the news broke, a lot of things have been said about AJ's potential opponent. A lot of guys threw their hearts into the ring, most notable Andy Ruiz Jr. However, he was not the man who won the opportunity to take on Anthony Joshua. That man goes by the name Robert Hellenius, yes, if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because he was the guy who got absolutely destroyed against Deontay Wilder in his combat fight after losing to Fury three times. Hellenius, however, has competed not too long ago for accepting the fight and will be taking on Anthony Joshua instead of Dylan White. Now, the reason this matchup is really interesting is because a lot of people see a future matchup between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. It's brewing, it's in the works, it's something that a lot of the fight fans want to see. Now there is definitely going to be a direct comparison into Joshua's performance in this fight and how Deontay Wilder was able to dispatch Linus very early in the fight, making an absolutely dominant performance. Would Joshua be able to replicate that or will he take him a little bit more time to get Linus out of there? Or... Could the unthinkable happen? Could he possibly lose to Elinius? We'll need to wait and see. Now away from boxing and back to mixed martial art. And we're bringing it home to Africa. The EFC went down on Thursday. And the headline was for the light heavyweight championship. Between JC Lampret taking on Juan Dile for EFC gold. This fight was really, really interesting to watch. Zwandile came out extremely confident, didn't really put up any guard, walked Lampret down from start of the fight till the round three with his hands down, super confident, like he did not see any threat from Lampret standing. For most part of the fight, this was true, as even though he did not, as even though he did not approach with caution, he was not caught by anything special from Lampret. However, his dominance of the stand-up game did not turn out to be in his favor as he managed to knock Lampret down a couple of times but could not get him out of the ring. He could not end the fight, yes, when Lampret was on the ground. Zwandile did not do enough to force a stoppage from the referee 
and Lampret got saved by the bell in round two. He did manage to knock Lampret down again, but this time, as he tried to capitalize, he was too tired, and Lampret slapped on the submission and got him out of there by a, a guillotine choke. All right, now moving away from the EFC. KSI this past week on an interview has thrown shade at Jake Paul. Jake Paul emerged victorious in his fight against Nate Diaz, even though a lot of people thought that he could have done a lot better in that fight. And Nate Diaz, who is the people's champion, did manage to put up a really, really impressive showing for someone who has given so much to the sport and a lot of people expect to be retired. Jake Paul, however, managed to bounce back from his loss to Tommy Fury and win this fight via unanimous decision after 10 rounds of action. KSI's issue, however, was the fact that Jake Paul did not show enough dominance in the fight. He was not impressed by the punching power of Jake Paul, saying he has pillow hands in the ring. Ola Jide Ola Inka Ola Tunji Williams. Yes, that is KSI's real name, by the way. He is Nigerian. Does fancy himself in a fight against Jake Paul. These two seem to be set on an inevitable collision course very soon. Will we see the fight happen? Will we see KSI take on Jake Paul? Or will this just continue to be a world worms? I guess we'll have to wait and see. All right, and last but not the least, Hakim Daudu is set to make his return this Saturday against Cop Swanson. Hakim Daudu is the huge betting favorite for this one, and a lot of people think he's going to get the job done easily. However, this is the fight game and anything can happen. Cop Swanson, who is an OG in the game, has been on a win-loss, win-loss, very unstable streak after going four losses in a row. However, the veteran of the sport does manage to put on a show every now and then. Hakim Daudu is going to have to be at his absolute sharpest if he is to win this fight. A lot of people are looking forward to this as a bounce-back opportunity for Hakim Daudu. All right, guys, that's it from us today. I remain to be with the African Fighters. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave your comments in the comment section. I will see you in another episode.